Hello and welcome. We're going to be looking at variables in this video. Section 1.1, the first section of the discrete mathematics course. Because it is the first video, let me just briefly talk about what to expect from these videos. These videos are not going to cover the sections in thorough detail in the same way that the textbook does. So it's very important that you also read the textbook in addition to watching these videos. But in these videos, we'll highlight some of the key ideas uh, that are presented in these sections. This section, 1.1, talks about variables. Now anyone taking this course has some understanding to begin with about what a variable is. Okay, variables are something that you'd see in an algebra course. In those cases, you're often using variables in various algebraic expressions or equations. Here, we'll frequently look at variables within a sentence. And there's two main ways that we're going to see variables used. One is to represent an unknown quantity. Is there a number x such that x squared plus 1 equals 5? Another way that variables can be used, though, is to make a general statement to avoid using any particular value in its place. So an example of that is for all real numbers x, x squared is greater than or equal to 0. Now notice that is a statement about all real numbers. I'm going to refer back to this example. Throughout this course, we're going to work with statements that involve more than one, one or more variables, as I said. Um, there are three types of statements that are discussed in this section. One is a universal statement, and that says that something is true for all elements of a set. Now, we just saw a statement that was saying something about all real numbers. And another example says all integers divisible by 9 are also divisible by 3. Okay, that's saying something about all integers, so that's a universal statement. Some words that often are indicators of a universal statement are things like all, or for all, for every, or for each. Another type of statement is an existential statement. And what that says is that something is true for some element of a set. So here's a, an example of that. There is a Math 225 student whose first name begins with the letter M. So that is saying something is true about some Math 225 student. Okay, And so things to look for to identify an existential statement are words like there is, or there exists, or for some. and let me note also that an existential statement typically is not going to make any claim about how many, you know, how many things in the set meet that condition. It's just saying that it's one or more. A conditional statement says that if one thing is true, then something else is true. So, for example, if a polygon S is a square, then S is a rectangle. Almost always with conditional statements, you're going to see the words if and then. There are some exceptions that we'll get into a little bit later in the course. Um, but for now, you know, kind of look for those words if and then um, as the key indicators of a conditional statement. Now, there, there are some ways of combining these statements, universal, existential, conditional. And because these are combinations of these things, these things um, they're going to tend to be a little bit more complicated. Let's look at an example of something called the universal conditional statement. For all integers x, if x is even, then x squared is a multiple of 4. So notice this is saying something about all integers, but what it's saying about all integers is something conditional. You could also have something called the 
universal existential statement. Here's an example of that. Every non-zero real number has a multiplicative inverse. So it's saying something about every non-zero real number, so that makes it universal. But what it's saying about them is that every non-zero number has a multiplicative inverse. So that it doesn't use the word there exists, but it could use the word there exists to have the same meaning. And so it is universal existential. Existential universal. There is a two-digit prime number that is at least as large as every two-digit prime number. So now it's saying that there is one, there is something in this set, and what it's saying about them, though, involves this universal aspect in the sense that it's saying it, at least as large as every two-digit prime number. And the distinction between universal existential and existential universal comes down to order. So the universal existential begins by saying something universal, and then there's the existential part of it, and then vice versa for existential universal. The next section of the book covers um, the language of sets. It's an introductory section about sets, and um, that's a topic that we'll explore more in a future section of the textbook. Um, but this gives some introductory information, and that video will be up next. Thanks for watching.